voice back again, the master, the master of metal church, <laughs> Kurt Vanderhoof. The blessed my, reverend, yes. <laughs> yes. I love your name. You have my favorite rock and roll name, even though it's real, right? That right. It's it. totally real. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. That's my nice. My favorite name. It's my favorite metal name ever. <laughs> Hands down. I wish my name was Jim Vanderhoof. That's what I'm right. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks. Great news. Metal Church will release their 13th studio, studio album, Congregation of Annihilation, on May 26th on Rat Pack Records. Great yep. news. The The Phoenix has risen, right? The Phoenix has I, risen. In a manner of speaking, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We All have. Right. We decided to. We've found a way forward, and we're still taking it step by step. But yeah, so, so this is the last communication. March twenty twenty. I spoke to you, and uh, and you were supposed to play the festival in Montreal, Heavy Montreal. Somehow the band canceled, whatever the reasons there were. And I don't oh, know. If I can't. I can't remember what it was. I but, can't remember what it was either. Yeah, but yeah, it, it was, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And then. And then you moved and you were inducted. Right. The Metal Church was inducted to the Metal Hall of Fame. And then you moved at the same time. So when did you start thinking, okay, I'm going to write this album? Oh, after I spoke to Mike and we decided to put, it was time to put together a new album. You know, all the COVID BS started lifting, you know, and all that stuff started. It's like, okay, well, let's, let's start working. And so I wrote a new album and sent it off to Mike and we were going back and forth starting our process. And then, uh, then it happened. Yeah. So there was a few months there where I kind of figured that it was over, you know, kind of naturally it was like, yeah, both original singers gone. I'm, am I getting the message? But then after a couple three months realizing I had an album sitting there that if nothing else, maybe we could put it out in, you know, in honor of Mike and so when we found Mark, it just kind of, it just, we, again, we took the whole thing step by step. That's why we didn't want to do a big, huge, you know, international search for a singer and make a big production of it because it might not have worked, you know, then we'd have to explain why it didn't work and it would have been a whole thing. So we wanted to do everything really, you know, uh, very under the radar. So yeah, as things worked out with Mark, it started taking on, because of the way he sings, started taking on a much more aggressive sound much more thrashy much more uh, uh back to our roots kind of thing i guess and so yeah so that was uh that was the catalyst for it so there's half of the songs of the of the new album is stuff i wrote with mike in mind and then when i started realizing that we started seeing there was a new direction kind of developing then i wrote another batch of songs to fit into you know fit into the more thrashy aggressive aspect of where we're going so let me ask you this. And when you collaborated with, was it a collaboration with Mike? I just want to see how much of Mike is left in those songs. Um, no, we never got to that point. We were just, oh, you know, man. I wrote the music and he was listening to it and we were just kind of going back and forth about what he liked and what he didn't like. And just kind of that got, that's as far as it got. Sadly. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 So you mean what you're trying to say is you had the song sort of ready. Yeah to go to the level of where you're going to properly record them with vocals and, and, and so yep. forth. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. We were going to start our creating process, you know, write a batch and I'll, I write the music and then Mike and I collaborate on the vocals and going through all the songs and figuring out which works and which ones do not. And, you know, just that whole process. So, you, you know, it, it, it was a huge shock to the whole metal world when Mike uh, passed away. It was, oh, I know. It, right. It, it was, and you know what? And, and if I'm, and if you don't want to answer any questions, I, I get it. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you, you say what you want to say, but I mean, you've known him so many years. Was this like completely caught off guard? Like some people see see this, right? And other right. people don't, right? Well, there was he was going through a period where he was having some trouble. There was a divorce and things like that. But when we started speaking again, he had kind of come out of it, and he was feeling good, ready to start working on a new record. You know, I mean, he was going through a rough time, but there was no pressure because COVID was going on. There was really nothing happening. You know, everything was kind of dead. So and I had just moved, you know, so we were just kind of just starting. But he had come out of it. And we had spoken and we were in contact. And again, he said, yeah, let's start getting a new album together. I started writing and the whole thing. So was I shocked? Yes. Mostly by the timing, because I thought. 
I thought he had kind of come out of it, or so it seemed. He was in good spirits. He was you know, ready to go to work, ready to make music, you know, and then literally just out of the blue, I got the call. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, a friend, you know, like you, you have known someone so, so long. You think you would see signs, you think you, and you don't. And I've heard this, this story from other people too, by the way. That's yeah, why I'm yeah. kind of asking. There was no signs, nothing. It just, it happens all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. Well, just, I mean, there, like I said, there was a sign. He was going through a rough time. Like we all do. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Like we all do, you know, we have bad moments and things like that. But as far as I could tell, he'd come out of it. We were in contact talking about new music, blah, 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 blah. Then it was like, boom. So then in that respect, it was like, it was a shock at that point. You know, it's amazing that these, like I, I heard, you know, either you in an interview or I read it, you know, he was on antidepressants. And it's amazing how antidepressants are supposed to stop this sort of stuff in a sense, right? But they're the, the and if you read the, the, the side effects on these drugs, it says thoughts of suicide. That's what the side effects say. I'm not saying on all of them. I'm just saying. Certainly. You know, it, and I'm not saying for sure. Yeah, I know. Right. Well, it's kind of like watching television. You see commercials for big pharma and they don't even tell you what the drug does. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. there's a I have a big problem with big pharma. But yeah. that is just my opinion as far as his antidepressant thing. That's that same here. Same here. Same here. Same here. Obviously. But it's very suspect because, like you said, you know, thoughts of suicide and things like that. But I thought that's the whole reason you wanted to take this to not have that feeling. Kurt, I, I well, could show you the I literature. Just, I could show you the literature. Oh, this. exactly, I, dude. I could show exactly. you. Like, it, it's right there. It's written right on the side yeah, effects. It's absolutely. Like, you know, I mean, I do. I am well aware that some of these things do help some people. Absolutely. Um, but I think it's often way too prescribed. And some of it is, I think some of it is pretty nefarious. So it, it's kind of like those commercials you see, you know, this will cure your constipation. Side effects may cause constipation. Yeah. Side effects are, <laughs> yes. Your head's going to fall off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll go on some positive stuff here. Okay. Yes. So, so the search for the new singer, right? Okay. You're, you're kind of sitting on the fence. What should I do? Baby steps. Right. Right. The search. What, what kind of singer did you have in mind? Didn't have one in mind. Just whatever kind of came our way again just finding out who we knew without having to run ads or do any of that kind of stuff so there was one other guy that we checked out who was great but then then uh mark was suggested by stet and steve so he was yes. kind of already in our in our scene and uh and so we checked it out and there were two different styles and mark just seemed like a good fit and also then because along with that came a more aggressive sound which kind of appealed to me as far as, okay, this will be a new chapter. This will be a new direction or an old direction, new direction, however, where it just seemed kind of, it just made sense. It was just like, let's come out swinging, you know, let's not do another. We don't want a Mike clone. We don't want a David Wayne clone or anything like that. Let's do something. Let's start a new, so to speak. And Mark really provided that. So and what what kind of set list? So Mark's in the band. I guess he. I know Mark too. He's a great yeah. guy. He's a great guy. A great voice. Um, yeah. What what's the set list going to look like? Are we? The set list is going to be mostly uh, the uh, first two albums mm -hmm. with some Mike stuff, Mike era stuff, because we're switching it up. Because obviously, when Mike was in the band, we were doing majority of his stuff. And Absolutely, his yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, so now we're going to go back and do a lot of the older stuff. And we're going to pull out a couple of, you know, few deep tracks from that era, which are things that haven't been played, which will be kind of fun. And, uh, a, you know, a couple of songs off the new album. Again, we love, we want to play the new album, but we're well aware that most of the fans want to hear the old stuff, you know, because that's, you know, that's just the way it goes. I go see goes. bands that I've liked for 40 years and, hey, I love their new album, but I want to hear the old stuff. You know, so it just comes with the territory. So we want to do some some different old stuff. A lot of the stuff we haven't played before. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Kurt, did you produce this album, or are you yes. just kind of let everybody? Yep. And did you give free reign to Mark? To, to Mark wrote all the lyrics. Okay, good. Yeah, that's he, good. I let him go, and I said good because it was good. It doesn't always have to come out of my head. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it, and but I, you know, that gave it a different sound. It was time for something new, and Mark totally delivered. 
So, so, so give me a sentence for the people who have not heard the album, what to, they're going to expect. It makes a good headline what the sentence is, right? Um, so the new Metal Church album sounds like? The old Metal Church with modern production. And heavier. Yeah. You got to say, you gotta, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The new Aggressive? Metal Church is heavier and sounds like the old, the old Metal Church, but with modern production. All right. Something like that. <laughs> Something yeah. Like that. <laughs> in terms of in terms of the uh, lyrical themes, you just were you like talking to uh, Mark about that? You know. Well, I kind of gave him pretty much free reign. But one thing that is very important to me is that it's got to have uh, it's got to got to have a positive spin on it to a degree. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm uh, you know because I, I, as a Christian, I don't want to you know, stand around, you know, I don't want to, I don't want anything that I can't stand behind. So, you know, so, so he said, those are the only guidelines I gave him, you know, cause we won't, there's no Satanism. There's no, none of that garbage in our stuff. So, um, so that was the only guidelines I had, you know, and uh, so he worked within that parameter, you know, and it's very nice when you can do that kind of thing, but yet have it sound just as aggressive as anything else, you know, and trying to keep a positive spin on it. Cause that's one thing that's important to me in any kind of music. It's supposed to uplift people. It's supposed to make people feel better, you know, and, and it, it should. And so I want to kind of do as much as I can to make that happen. So. And, and how far, like, where's that line? If you can, like, you're a Christian, right? Like how mm -hmm. far would you go past out there? Some Christians will go far. Some Christians will just stay really. It depends high. on the context. You know, I won't go past, you know, there's no, there's no Satanism. There's none of the devil garbage and there's none of that stuff. So that's pretty much the line, you know, and, you know, any of the, and the, and the, you know, just the blatant, you know, sexuality stuff is, which I don't like anyway, which I think is kind of tired, Cheesy, you know, the yeah. whole, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, I like to be, and I think that also makes the person need to be more creative because some of those things are just easy cop out lyrics, you know, the sexism, ooh, baby love rock and roll and ooh, hail Satan and all that garbage. You know, that's not creative, you know, say something, you know, it doesn't have to be brilliant, but, you know, use some lyrics, you know, and just having a lot of nerve and saying a lot of, you know, controversial stuff. That's, that's not talent. That's not creative. That's just because you got a lot of nerve. Big deal, you know. Go out and say stuff and be offensive and stuff. I don't find that entertaining at all. So, you know, you know what I always me. you know what I loved about your songwriting. It's 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 aggressive, but it's subtle at the same time. There's a certain well, you know, musicality is really important, no matter what form of music. For yeah. me, you know, I mean, it can be aggressive and nasty and dissonant and all that stuff. But yet it's still somehow got to have some musicality to it. The singer has to hit notes, you know, and Mark can do the the screamo stuff, but he can also sing and hit notes in there too. So that's, I mean, in, in order for me to be interested, you got to have all those bases covered. You know, it's got to be musical. You got to be able to sing. There's got to be a melody. There's got to be a hook, be it guitar or vocals or preferably both, you know. And, and and don't scream a bunch of darkness stuff at me, you know, for me, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you know what? It, like, that's like, what makes well, things Because I know I'm speaking to a lot of people in the metal world where it's quite not the same. It's not the cool thing to say, but I don't care. You know, I that's not cool to me. You know, evil is not cool. And, you know, so metal sounds evil, but it doesn't have to be evil. It can sound that way. I think, you know, if you listen to the old early Black Sabbath stuff, you know, it's all heavy and dark and doomy, but it's really not, you know, it's really not lyrically that dark. It's actually quite warning against it, which I think, now that's clever. You know, I like that. That's, so. that's it. Clever is the word. I like that word. Yeah. Um, all right. So then you have, like, I'm going to tell you, I heard the, like, I heard this album just maybe a few times, right? Because I just mm -hmm. got it. And wow, man, it's a kick in the face. <laughs> Good. Nice. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that's my, that's my one liner. It's a kick Good. in the face. <laughs> well, there you go. Use that one. <laughs> yeah. Metal Church is a kick in the face. Yeah, that's right. Another Judgment Day that kind of starts things off, right? Mm -hmm. Like in your face. And then Congregation of Annihilation, another smack in the face. And then Children the Lie. Oh, sorry, Pick a God and Pray. We've already heard that single. Mm -hmm. Another kick in the face. And then Children of the Lie. That's when you're saying, wait a second. That's the old stuff. That's kind of like, you know, we're going back to these guys here, right? Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, 
and, and the, sort of like the little flanger on the guitar, the subtle little little strumming there that goes there. Is that it's kind of like is that what you were looking for? To kind of set some atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. And then the big ending where, you know, I because I always love that about Black Sabbath, speaking of them again, where they would have a song and then the middle of the song they'd change to something completely different and never get back to the song again. Yes, you know, I, yes. you know, I always loved that. <laughs> I thought it was so great. So it's a definitely in parts, you know, kind of more of the progressive rock kind of approach. You know, and I was like, oh, I want to do that. And I came up with that riff, you know, for that. It's like, oh, that'd be perfect. One of those big, slow fade out things, you know, which are a lot of fun. You know, trying to be as musical as possible within the framework of metal. You know. And when I spoke to Mark, he said that originally you had these bunch of songs and then you kind of wrote with him a new batch of songs that were Correct. more in your face. Yep. But those ones kind of like. I guess those are the bonus ones or is that so, a couple of them are a couple of them are a couple of them are still are in the archives you know and so yeah a couple of the 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 other songs are two of the bonus tracks so the album is kind of half and half mm -hmm. you know some of them were written that made the album are for the mic from the mic batch and then another batch is from the new mark batch you know yeah and, and and let me ask you in terms of what is your favorite song i mean okay everybody's gonna say this one this one this one but i mean if you have to pick one or two let's say i don't and, know and um, i would have to say children of the lie probably because of those that kind of the proggy bigger you know atmospheric type of stuff you know, you know but what? i have to say me the nothing i really like too you know you know what i would agree with that too and that's another off the dark maybe album you know and mm -hmm. um and all that we destroy i think that has like this really big chorus very melodic and right kind of mm -hmm. like that too and that's always been metal church like thrash and suddenly you've got a melodic chorus happening or vice versa yeah right yeah yeah don't bore so, us get to the chorus yeah. <laughs> what in terms of you know i know that you've been sort of singer one two three four i mean did you say to yourself you know what i, I, I can't you know things are getting lost here with all the singers and that's why we didn't make a big production of finding a singer. Yeah, we did. Cause it was, I was feeling, I mean, when, when, uh, before Mike came back to the band, it was like, you know, I just was at that particular time in those circumstances, a fourth singer for metal church did, but did not seem like the thing, the right thing to do. And then fortunately Mike came back and that made sense. You know, that kind of kept the thing going. It, it seemed legitimate. It's because I said there isn't a fourth singer to Metal Church, but that was during those circumstances. This was a different, obviously a different circumstance. So again, that's why we just wanted to try it. And we're still taking baby steps. We're going to start playing live uh, next month. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, you know? I think that's the best approach. You just yeah, take Who knows? It day. may work. It may be great. Or it, it may just be a train wreck. I don't know. You know, it, it, who knows? So we don't want to, you know, come out and start. We don't know. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to do what the would best. You do? What, if, what would you do if you said, you know what? Okay, I've had enough of Metal Church. What, what are you going to do? Like, what, what other projects would you like to work oh, on? Oh, I have Presto Ballet, my progressive 70s prog rock band, and Hall of Flame, my rock and roll band I was in after I left Metal Church. And we went out with ZZ Top and put out a record on that. We have a new album coming out, too. Okay. So. Yeah, that's so great. it's just that's just meat and potatoes, rock and roll, and then I got my uh, prog rock outlet. So mm -hmm. I like instead of messing with metal church, I like doing all kinds of different things, and because I love all kinds of music, so I like challenging myself to see if I can create all different types of music. So, but I'm really excited about the Hall of Flame record. That's it came out way better than we had expected. It was intentionally going to be just something to document all these songs that we wrote for a second record that never happened. And as we did it, it was just, it just took on a life of its own. So we say, like, okay, we need to make this something real. So we did. So, That's cool. That's very yeah. cool. Um, so what, you know, you've been around now for a long time. And you've been around industry. forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't, um, don't get me started. Right. Yeah. That, that's yeah. why you, that's why you moved to sunny uh, California. Right? Yeah. If you had to get the joints and the arthritis. Yeah. Right. The music industry today versus the music industry back then well what are the great stuff back then and the bad parts as well as the good parts today and the bad or the cons today you know like yeah love that question the good stuff about back then was you there was a galvanizing kind of sound there was a scene there was things that 
when we were starting out, we felt we were part of a movement, which we were. That was very inspiring and very, you know, lots of camaraderie, you know, pirates going to go attack, you know, the radio and that kind of thing. So that was very fun. And we were definitely doing that. And once the major labels started picking up on it, there was the potential to really blow up and be really big, things like that, which was great. The downside was, is the way the business part worked back then. You know, the the industry then, you had to go through the major label filter. And you were advanced tons of money for videos, album production, tour support, and things like that. But you paid that back out of your percentage. So unless you broke big like Metallica, you were very likely to not see a dime. So that was a big, like you, the, word did, recoup, the word recoupable became very important. Yes, yes. Let me ask you this, just as on that topic right there. I know, I think it was Joey Vera or John Bush I spoke to, and they are still trying to pay off. Maybe they have today. They're still mm-hmm. trying to pay off their first album was 250000 right? Yep. yep. Did you pay off? Did you recoup off the first two? I Yes, yes, we have. We have recouped that, and uh, I'm in the process of doing some stuff because there's some archival stuff that I'm working on that I can't talk about too much, archival stuff that I think all Metal Church fans are going to be really excited about coming. So that's coming. Yeah, we just did. Yeah, we we just did a few years ago. And when you recoup, do you own your masters at that point? No. Another problem. Yeah, they own they own your masters in perpetuity unless you negotiated that out of your contract. Which in, univer- in, in the universe as well, or is it just on you know on Earth? A, a universe, I think. You know, if they want to sell, and people think I'm joking. I'm not joking. No, in that universe, was in a, I mean, that was in a really good movie called Bad News. You know, where like if there's Martians and we want to sell your records to them, we have the right to. You know, that's right. So, no, they own the masters in perpetuity, but they're we're learning there's some loopholes and there's some things that have changed where they're not being as strict about that anymore because things have changed and it's been long enough. So in most cases it's in perpetuity, but there's some wonderful archival, wonderful fun things coming in them for the metal church catalog. In the next year or I'm like next year, like Pardon? this year, like, like in 2023 or 2024. Uh, no, well, it'll be, I'm working on it now, but probably next year. Okay, yeah. good. Something to look yeah. forward to. Okay, yeah, let's definitely. continue this. Let's continue this good okay. and bad. Now, now the 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 bad stuff about now is there's not much money in the selling of records because nobody sells a lot of physical copies. So the whole thing is kind of reversed. You put out a record so you can tour. Yeah. So that way you make your money. Now that's really the down and you know so the physical product now thanks to why I'm so happy vinyl is popular again. So, because that's all I listen to anyway. I just enjoy the whole ritual and the sound and the cover and the art and the whole thing. I just, it sounds better if it's done right. So physical product, not sold so much. People don't see, you don't sell a lot of records anymore. Uh, Streaming, they don't really pay for their product that they sell. So even though music is out there everywhere and it's consumed bigger than it ever has been, the Mm -hmm. revenue is not the same. And I hope, you know, there's going to be changes in that because the way it's happening is not fair. So that's the downside. Upside is, is it's direct artist to fans now. Mm-hmm. There is yeah. no major label filter anymore. So all us old guys, which I like to call veterans, <laughs> all us old guys can still have a legitimate career without having to deal with a label thing. Oh, no, they're old. What are the kids going to do? You know, because our fans are older with us too. Direct artist to fans. And the cool thing is, is like for Rat Pack, for example, the independent label is mirrored by the musician now. So we're in control of our career. Yeah. Which you can't, you can't put a price tag on that. I mean, because if it wasn't that way, and if the music business didn't change, you know, how would old guys like us have a career, a legitimate career, unless you were Metallica? You know, or somebody of that caliber, that size, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And it's so, I was really scared about the, the turn of the, you know, the the millennium when things, when the whole Napster thing started to hit and I'm like, oh no, it's over. You know, I thought it was over, but, but it, again, I, I, the good outweighs the bad for me. 
you know, I still get to do it. I get to do other projects. I get to still go play. You know, there's not big money, but I was never in it for the money anyway. Yeah. If what I do generates money, one, yeah, then I want my cut, but yeah. that's not why I do it. You know, yeah. it's like, I do it anyway. <laughs> that's you know? a good way to put it. I do it anyway. Don't yeah. tell anybody that. Shh. Yeah. Like, no, don't I'll, no I'd, I'd do this if I wasn't paid, you know? Yeah. Don't let the don't tell anybody that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, but yeah, then but it'll be like, like, what? You don't want to play for free at this festival? Come on! No, you know, uh -uh. Like... no, I don't. I said I do it anyway, but I didn't mean that. I didn't mean you, right? I know. Yeah, no, but it, I, I, I love music. That's what I do. That's who I am. That's what I do. So, but if it generates income, yeah, I want it. But I have, uh, I, you know, I. It took me a while to get used to the idea, as as well, because it was changing. It hadn't figured. It's we hadn't figured out the way it was going to go. So. The new music business took a while to get get our head around and get a handle on how to how to do this. So it's definitely a different different animal. But you know now there's no expiration date on us, any of us. I mean, because there's a lot of bands like you know like Metal Church now that are from the same era, our peers that are still going and doing great. You know, I mean, Anthrax, Metallica, Overkill, Exodus. You know, Sl well Slayer's done, but you know all there's all the guys that we were kids. They're we're all still doing this. That's awesome. You know? Kurt, even the bands who never even made it big that had names back in the 80s, yeah. they just had like demos. They're now touring and, you know, on festivals. Yeah. Gotta love that, you know. That's because we eliminated the major label filter, you know, where it was corporate thing. Now, the, again, the benefits of the corporate thing was you could get real big. You yeah. know, you could be huge and everything like that. And those can you sold lots of numbers and things like that, but there was a control factor that you had to relinquish in order to do it, you know, yeah. unless yeah. you broke really big and then you could take over your, you know, your career. But now, I mean, I don't know that I'd change anything. The one thing, like I mentioned, the only thing that I would change in the business, because streaming is a wonderful thing for the average consumer, the way yeah. the technology is, but these streaming services have got to pay us yeah, because they don't, and you know, and their, their argument is, well, we pay the guy who sort of owns the publishing, which is usually like sort the labels, right? pennies on the pennies on the dollar, pennies. Yeah, like they, they're right. charging ten dollars a month to use as many songs as they want, right? It's kind of like I yep. give you ten dollars and I could go to a record store and listen to anything I want and bring it home and listen to it, and then I just give it back at the end of the month. Yeah, and then you're done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's well, not right. That's not right. So, yeah. you know, I, and if there was a way to get a handle on the piracy, you know. In a way, the streaming, I find, is piracy. and I find the streaming sort of l lessened the piracy, you know, not to say it eliminated mm -hmm. it, but it did lessen it. So that's a good thing. It certainly there. did. It certainly yeah. did. But they're not paying for it either. So no. here's these companies that are, you know, providing a service, but they're not pay paying for their product that they sell, you know, and it's. I have problems with that. Yeah. But the reach on streaming, you know, you could go to Japan, you could play, you play Asia, you play everywhere because they, they're listening to your yeah, music. Yeah, it's everywhere. everywhere. Again, one of the upsides, yeah. but pay for your product. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Artists always get the shaft. The artists always oh, get the we shaft. Are always, that's why when I first realized after doing The Dark, when I realized how you really make records, you know, it's like, and that's where my interest really started to go. So that's why I kind of stepped back for a while because I learned the production thing. Also learning that the band was at the bottom of the pay food chain. Yeah, on the label, yeah. Yeah, it was like, okay, all these people, all these people that are around me are making way more money than I am. <laughs> that's right. Fuck that. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. Because no. people don't realize you get production credit, you get re credit, production credit, you get royalty credit, you get mechanicals, you get this. And the more you add to the overall production of things, the more royalties you get, right? Well, yeah. Well, the more you're Percentage. involved and you take away those other people, you know, That's you right. have publicists and producers and engineers and studio costs and all these things that just take then you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, and that's the one upside about the digital world. And with computers now is that digital recording has gotten good. It wasn't at first, it was really bad for a while, but people can make their records at home. So you don't, so the big studios that were charging, you know, you know, 60 bucks an hour, you know, 
no, they don't do that anymore. They're done. They're gone. You know, because we, you know, the dark, I don't remember. I think we spent like $60,000 in 1985 wow. on the album, but, you know, yeah. three months worth of studio time. And then the producer fee, you know, then we had a video and then we had tour support. And it's just like, it just, yeah. I mean, it was just the way it was because the studio, you know, the, the huge investment to make a, you know, a competitive record, the equipment that you needed was, you know, was extremely expensive. Well, that is certainly a different game now. But the problem with that is, is that just because somebody bought us some software and a microphone, suddenly they're a record producer. So you get, you know, the business isn't competitive. It's just crowded, you know, and it's like, okay, so there's, but you take the good with the bad and everything, you know? So, you know, we make our own records now. You know, and so you we know, that's 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 that. what I like about you. You're always positive and you're looking at the bright side of things. A lot of guys are saying, oh, it's over. I can't take it anymore. I yeah, can't stand this business. Well, then quit. Go go get a job. Quit. <laughs> give up. Yeah, just give up. <laughs> and also, you forgot to mention, you know, these record companies, they buy you homes and cars and they go, look, I bought you a car. But meanwhile, right. you're paying for it <laughs> through your royalties. and recouping. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, you didn't buy it. You just loaned me my own money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, but there's goods. I mean, we had we were very lucky that uh, when we when we were at Electro, we were working with Michael Alago, who's still a great friend to this day. But it was just it had nothing to do with him. It was just the way the business ran because it was big business. I mean, big business, you know, and so now it's big business, but in a different way. You know, it's yeah. just a whole new animal. And I, I can't complain about it. Yeah, there's some things I wish were different, like the streaming and the piracy. But man, just the whole being in control of your career and being directly artist to fans now, you can't beat it. You can't beat it, you know. What's what's the feedback like so far? It's been great. I mean, it, it's been it's been better than I had could even, even hoped. Again, with Fourth Singer. You know, but I think because it is more aggressive and it's much more in your face, much more of a kick in the face that I think the fans really like that, you know. And yeah, so the response is 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 great. Yeah. So now we'll see what it's like live. You know? I'm, 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 I'm curious. I'm curious. Yeah. When's the first date? Uh, June 2nd in Chicago at Reggie's. Oh, yes. Yes. Then you're going to New York after that. Then we go to Detroit the next night at Token Lounge. And then... Um, and then at the end of the month, we got a week long run up in the Northeast. All right. So Metal Church, the 13th studio album, Congregation of Annihilation, a kick in the face. A kick in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Coming out May 26 via Pat, Rat Pack Records is a mouthful, Rat Pack Records. Right? Yeah. It's just like, uh, any last words? I just, I mean, just the usual, but very heartfelt appreciation for the fans staying with us all these years. And the fact that I still get to do this in any capacity is truly a blessing and it's not lost on me. So hats off to you, man. You, you keep on going and you keep going and you know, all, all the hits you get and, you know, and, and I mean, all the, all the, the challenges and the obstacles, you keep going at it, man. I just, well, it gets to play man. music, you know, how, what could, what could be wrong with that? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not in it to get rich or be cool. Cause I'm neither one of those, but I love music, you know? <laughs> so, you know, so I get to play music cause I love music. All right, Kurt. Thank you very much. Have yourself a wonderful day. Hey, you too. Good to see you again. Yeah. Take care, man. Bye-bye.